Good morning. I'm a little wound up today. I'm not really sure what's wrong with me. So my inner child is very much alive and well and quite in control today. So I hope you guys are ready to play. I hope somebody decides to come and play. <laughs> or I'll be making mud pies all by myself. I can't tell if I'm actually online or not. There I am. Nope, that was somebody else. That was this funny <laughs> Hello, I see someone. Thank you for popping in. Say hi to me. I see someone. Jenna, thank you for joining me. I'm a little wound up today. I don't know what's going on. So I apologize in advance for my silliness. Watch out. <laughs> hey, Sherry, thank you for popping in. I'm trying to find me. Right, hold on. <laughs> I've lost myself again. <laughs> I spent a lot of I spent a lot of time lost in some La La Land. Today is one of those days. It's going to be okay, though. I promise. Oh, look at me. I'm talking in two places again. Good morning, Wendy. Thank you for jumping in. So, oh, 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 I don't mean to do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want that. And watch party. What is wrong with me today? There are days that I'm sure that you can all relate that we have this. Please share it to the group, Wendy. <laughs> please help me to share. <laughs> I love how you ask me, and I'm like, please. I can't figure out what I'm doing this morning. I'm really like a child today. I woke up really early, like at 5 o'clock in the morning, and I went to bed really late, and so my brain is barely functional. So any help that anyone wants to give me at this time, I am calling in all of the powers of the universe <laughs> to join me here today. And hopefully I'm not too silly for you guys and you can handle it because I really do feel that way. It's like the energy, I've been stuck in a lot of like growth, big growth, um, heavy stuff. And so today just feels like I just don't want to do anything that's important today. I really just want to play today. So that's where I am. And um, it's just the way it's going to be. We're just going to have some fun today. I feel like different days, different um Different things happen in our group. And some days it's very serious and very heavy. And then other days it's like, all right, let's lighten up. Let's have fun. Because I really do. Good, Wendy, I'm glad you're feeling like that. Marika, thank you for joining me. So I really do feel like we just, the, the universe, our angels, our guides are oftentimes trying to say, you know, would you just lighten up? It's only life. You know, like, why are you taking this so seriously? So, and I've written about that. We have times when things are so serious and so heavy. And it's really difficult to get out from underneath that. And then, then it's like they give us these days where it's like, yeah, would you just play today? <laughs> just have fun. Just be the child today. You don't have to figure it all out. You don't got to work too hard. I really need to get a haircut. I like, I really got to see if I can locate somebody to chop this <laughs> mess off my head. And that feels like too much work to me today. Because <laughs> it means I got to go out and do the world and I got to wear a mask and I don't like to wear a mask because I like to be able to just smile at people. And so I just choose not to do it. <laughs> I just choose to let it keep growing wild. She's the wild woman. Let's see what's going on, you guys. I could do, you know what my daughter did? She got so tired of all of the lack of being able to get out and get anything done. She's 13 and she can do whatever she wants, right? I let my kids do what they want with their hair. I'm, I'm really not the type that says you can't do this or you can't do that. So when Caroline was here visiting a week and a half ago, whenever it was, while I was sleeping, she shaved my daughter's head. She did. <laughs> so I have a girl who's 13, who's tall and skinny as she can be, and she got almost a buzz cut. It's basically a buzz cut on her head, and I'm perfectly okay with that. Like and now, now she wants me to take her to Sally's to get her some more hair color so she can be a red-headed buzz cut child. <laughs> Okay, whatever, whatever. I'll I'll take the redheaded buzz cut child any day as long as she's feeling good about herself. I'm happy with her. All right, what is going on in your neck of the world? It's gonna be a blooper reel today. <laughs> what do you think of that? Let's just do bloopers. What's going on in your neck of the woods today? You need a haircut. Yeah, let your husband do it. I, I'm afraid. I had Caroline bring those clippers, and I, I almost thought, I'm like, you know, you could do something with this mop. I used to have really long hair, and I think I'm just coming to a place where I'm going to get past that need to have it cut short again, 
and it's just going to be long. You know, it just may be it. Um, was I a redhead when I was younger? When I was little, I was definitely a redhead. My head, even, even, um, a couple of years ago, if I look back at pictures, I had much more red in my hair. It seems as if instead of going gray, I'm just going more and more blonde, which is okay with me. I've always had these highlights. You can see it's lots of layers, but it used to be in the summertime, I was more of a blonde and in the wintertime, I was more of a redhead. And lately I've just been going more and more blonde. So, so be it. This is going to do what it's going to do. Let's see. Strawberry blonde. Wendy, mine is strawberry blonde now. Mine was red when I was young. Maybe that's just our aging process. Instead of growing, going silver, we go gold. What does that sound? Let's just go gold, Wendy. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I like that idea. I'm sticking with it. I've never colored it. I've only ever colored my hair one time. And I colored it like... Um, it was after Abby was born, and I think I needed a change. So I went like an auburn color. And now when I look back at pictures, I don't even, I think I had one picture from the back of my head. I never got pictures of myself back then. But I think my aunt or uncle took a picture, and I was like, who is that? Like, I didn't even recognize myself. I didn't like it. So I went back to natural. So this is just what I'm always going to be. I don't think I'll ever color it again. Christine, thank you for popping in. I'm silly this morning. And I think that we're just going to have fun today, and our meditation time is going to be all about play. It's all about lightening things up. We are, like, I, I'm around people that I love very much. I'm thinking of a certain person who is so weighed down, who has so many responsibilities and things that take him away from play time. And so I think that I'm just really focusing on that today. It's been important. I wrote about it in my book. I don't know anybody that has read mine and Paul's book, I should say, who has read Anchor Light. Um, there's a part in there called Bottle of Rum, and it talks about um, lightening up, about really we came here to have fun. And we need to remember that, that it's not all heavy. We really, in the energy that we're in now, we're being given this like it's our gift. Like, here, just have some fun with this. It's, it's, it's not even, um, it's not like, I was just watching the people across the street. This is, I mean, my brain's all over. But I was watching them, and they've been here all weekend on vacation. And they were rowdy as they could be. I live in a vacation town, mostly up in here. There's very quiet in our neighborhood. Every now and then, we'll have temporary people across the street that'll come in, and they were rowdy every night. They've been having a good time. And it's okay. I just turn on a lot of white noise, and I sleep through it. But, man, I was happy to see them pack up and leave this morning so I could have some peace and quiet. But also, I was watching them and I was remembering myself like five years ago when I was working all the time and I lived for the weekends and I lived for those vacations. And at the end of the vacations, I remember feeling, especially when I was in the mountains with Steve, I remember, man, it was like, oh, I don't want to leave here. I remember how it felt like I was ripping my heart out every time I left the mountains. And so I think I'm in that space of... Um, the contrast today of seeing how much my life has changed. You know, the universe kind of brings that to us every so often. They're like, yeah, look, I look around me. Yesterday, we were up at the top, the highest peak. We went up to Clingma's Dome. Jim took me on this beautiful walk on the Appalachian Trail so that I could see what one of the shelters was like, because I've never, I've always kind of thought, oh man, walking on the Appalachian Trail is like, for me, energetically, it's like stepping into history. Um, there's this energy of just, it's an, it's incredible just to step one little foot onto, onto the Appalachian Trail lights me right up. So we took a nice walk on it for a while and we got to one of the shelters and I was looking around that shelter and I'm like, man, do you know how many people have taken this challenge and walked that Appalachian Trail from one end to the other? What is it over 300 miles? Is that what it is? I'll have to look it up. It was from Boston down into Georgia, I think. Um, but they, uh, and I watched the movie Wild, and I think that's the same path that she was on. And it's wild, and it's dangerous in some places. And it's uh, to think about being that we, we found one man at the shelter. He was all by himself. And I doubt anybody else is going to come because of COVID. There's not that many people wanting to gather closely in like shelters and things. So he was there by himself. And I'm like, man, what a challenge. I think he's doing one that's going to take him about 65 miles. Um, 
in these shelters, they're not much. I'll post a picture later. <laughs> There's not much. They're cute. They're nice little places to get in. But I'll tell you what, if the bears want to come visit you, it's not much to stop them. So I don't think I'd sleep well. <laughs> I think I would be sleeping with one eye open all night long. But it was a beautiful time up there at the top of those mountains. And then as we're driving back down, I'm thinking, how many times have I come to these mountains? And when I had to, I would only be here for a week. And then, and then I had to pack up my stuff and I had to leave. And it really hurt to leave every time. Hi, Scarlett. Hi, Terry. Thank you for popping in. Marianne, thank you for being here. Um, so yesterday I'm pinching myself. I'm like, you know what? I don't got to leave. <laughs> I don't even want to go on vacation anymore. I don't have to leave all of these beautiful trails, all these places around here. I'm living my heaven. <laughs> it's so incredible. So think about yourself. What has it been like, you know, five years ago, two years ago, six months ago, three weeks ago? <laughs> it's changed that fast. Three months ago, I was totally different. I was in a totally different place. Hi, Charles. Um, yeah, the bears. <laughs> Those bears are kind of cute because I see them at a distance. I saw some again the other day. Mama bear was on the ground. And then baby bear was hanging off the side of a tree and he was looking right at us. And I thought, oh, how cool. I wish one of these days I had a good zoom lens on me so I can really get a good picture. I love the bears at a distance. Do I want to sleep in a shelter where they can come get me while I'm sleeping? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Mostly they just want your food. They don't really want to hurt people around here. They're not, unless you come between mama and babies, they're probably not going to get too close because they're kind of fearful of people. Um, but they definitely will come to you if you have food. And this guy was sitting there cooking something on one of those little burners right outside the shelter. He was cooking like scrambled eggs or something. I'm thinking, are you crazy? <laughs> You're going to draw the bears in. Don't eat. Eat stuff that doesn't have a strong smell. <laughs> Maybe burn some incense or something. <laughs> Get rid of that smell. I wanted to help the man. I didn't want the bears to come visit him tonight while he's trying to sleep. But everybody does things their own way. He'll be okay. I'm sure he's fine. We don't have to worry about him. It's okay. He's fine. Let's see. What else? <laughs> ah, yesterday we found our treasure map. Charles, I love that you found that treasure chest yesterday. And I hope that you have spent time really digging into that treasure chest a little bit. Seeing what you can see. Realizing it's something that was coming to me this morning. <laughs> this is the powerful message that came through me this morning. And I'm going to let it. I'm going to let it come through. We have spent, humanity has been so wrapped up in our titles, in our, in our bank accounts, in our, in our time frames, our calendars, our scheduling, our jobs, our educations, then what kind of car we've got. <clears throat> we all have a title. Am I Mr., Mrs., Aunt, Mom, Uncle, Reverend? What am I? What am I? Am I a doctor? Am I, what am I? And, and we can get wrapped up in that with our with our spiritual things too. What am I? You know, we worry so much about our abilities. We're like, wow, that person's a medium. What am I? That person is an energy healer. What am I? That one's a Reiki master. What am I? What am I? And so we can worry so much about what our talents are, what our abilities are. And oftentimes we just think, well, hi, Alyssa. I haven't seen you in a while. Thank you for popping in. Yeah, it's cute, but the bears are cute at a distance. <laughs> um so I think that today the important thing is, is for our little inner selves to realize that we are unlimited, that we don't really have to have titles. It's kind of cool to have certificates. It's very cool to have certificates. I, I have great respect for those people who have gone through many years of college, who have gotten these degrees, you know, who have um, gone and become Reiki masters or, um, you know, whatever kind of training that you can have. I have huge respect huge respect so please don't ever think that I think anything less than that um, and we've needed that so they can go on and keep training others to do what they're doing so it's it's hugely important I can get wrapped up in trying to figure out what I am just like you do what am I hi Sally thank you for popping in what am I the most beautiful things happen when I stop asking that question when I was just like after Steve died I was just like all right whatever I don't, I didn't think that I had any abilities, truly. I just thought that I was like this, I, I had to go to other people for all this stuff. Steve taught me that I was a medium because I loved him so much that I started to feel him because <laughs> I put myself on the bathroom floor and started trying to find him desperately. So I desperately, in my desperation, I opened up to my abilities. 
Um, and I'm still growing. I still don't really know what I am. Do I need to know? Not really. I don't need titles. I don't need a bunch of this. I have them. I have my little degrees. I have my training. I work hard. I'm still working on more of it. I'm still working towards that master's and the PhD. I'm working on it. And it feels good to work on it. And yet it's all about my expansion and my learning. It doesn't, doesn't really matter about all those titles because we all have beautiful um, limitlessness. We're all totally unique. We're all so connected to one another. And so if one person can do this, so can I. If I can do this, so can you. That's all I'm trying to say. Nobody, not one of us is more gifted than the next. Some of us have just worked harder at it than others. Some of us are just more open and more, more, mm, let's see, I wanted to say believing, but I don't like the word believing. I just chose not to not, not believe. <laughs> Maybe that is Steve. Is that you? <laughs> that was how I was. Wait a minute. I just felt you curl up behind me. Is that really you? You stopped me in front of that picture. I felt this energy just wrap around me. Is that you? I remember the first time I, I heard a love song that he and I used to like. I'm climbing out of the shower and I wrapped a towel around myself and I felt him start to move me in a dance. And I was like, wow, I don't know if I'm going crazy or if this is really him, but it didn't matter. And I think that's what I'm trying to say is it's so important to stop trying so hard to be like somebody else when you were created to be uniquely, perfectly, exactly who you are. <laughs> that's what they're trying to bring forth today. All of that training and all those titles are beautiful. If that's what you feel drawn to. If you feel like that's where you want to go, the direction, if your heart leaps and says, oh yes, I got to go do this. Yes, by all means do this. Please go to that that Reiki training, go to that, that metaphysical school like I did, go to, uh, go to law school, go to, you know, it's all, it's all beautiful and it's all perfect in its own way. What do you, what lights you up? So yesterday we were talking about the treasure maps and filling in your treasure map. And the way that you fill in that treasure map is by feeling that heart. What, when you walk around and you see things, it's coming in so beautifully right now. Excuse me for slowing down. When you're out and about and you see something that makes you spark, do you know what that is when you spark? It's like, <gasps> oh, I just felt something in my heart space. That's a spark. That's something to put on your treasure map. I really, I really can't ever recommend enough that everyone carry a journal with them at all times. I don't do it enough. But it has changed my life to journal these little things that I see or that I feel or these things that try to pull me in certain directions, write them down. They'll make sense later on. They may not make sense to you when you first see them. I remember when I first started, my third eye really started opening up and I would be meditating and all of a sudden I'm like, wow, what was that? <laughs> I just saw something just as clearly as anything. I wrote it down. And later on, sometimes it never makes sense. Sometimes it's just like, it's almost like, um, like a ping, like source is trying to, your, your guides are trying to give you something just to see, did she see that? And you're like, wow, look at I saw. And they're like, yeah, she saw that. Good. She's getting it. <laughs> yeah. She's opening up. We're making some progress. It may only be that, and which is huge. It may just be part of your training. You're opening up, but write it down anyway. I literally saw I, I've told this story a few times when after Steve died and I really needed help, I was really sick and I was really quite a suffering a lot. Even though I was sitting on the bathroom floor, I was really growing spiritually. I was really opening up to myself. I was physically still very sick. <clears throat> Being an empath, I had taken on a lot of Steve's um, symptoms and I had taken, I had not slept for three months straight. It was probably going on five months at this point. And I remember laying there and finally gone to sleep and I heard this voice yell at me, Paul. And I'm like, what in the world? I don't even know a Paul. What was that? Who's in my house? <laughs> it was freaked me out. And then when I was meditating, I saw his face just as clearly as anything. I saw him sitting next to another, a woman and I was like, I don't know who these people are, but I took note of it. And then when he friended me the next morning, I was like, oh, it's him. And I didn't. So sometimes it comes through really fast, easy, clear. Isabel, make, you know, we, oh, I'm going to give this to you and you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Or sometimes it comes about by walking through um, 
an antique store and you see something that is like, why am I so drawn to that item right there? I'm going to write it down. <laughs> it might be a past life thing. Oftentimes I think I'm very, very pulled to things because of past life existences. Paul, have I, Paul and I have known each other in past lives. We're all in those same soul families, right? Jim and I have known each other in past lives. Steve and I have gone through cycles over and over and over again of loss. So we, we are drawn to items that are reminding us of past life things, or they might be triggering us to things to a direction that we need to go in. Um, they might be drawing us to someone that we have plans to spend time with on this planet this time around. So that treasure map, they also might be bringing you to those gifts that you're looking for. You're looking so hard for those things. You're like, what am I? What am I supposed to be doing here? Pay attention. Your guides are always leaving you signs and symbols. It's part of your treasure map. And you can start filling that treasure chest. I wanted to see what Charles was saying up here. Um, yes, Wendy, we're all spirit and we can all connect. We're all energetic beings and we're all so connected. I've seen that for a long time, this golden grid all around the planet. And it goes to each individual, this golden cord that joins us together in such a beautiful way. So it's almost like I see the energy pumping from one to the other. And I know for me, I was an energy worker long before I knew what an energy worker was. <clears throat> I would go, um, I remember for a while, right in the year that Steve died, I was working in this amusement park and I loved it. It was the first time I worked at an outside, I always had desk jobs and I wanted to try this. And I did the kiddie rides just because I love kids so much. And there was one time where I put all these kids on these little flying rockets and it, Jim got that clock going, it's going off. Can you hear it? Okay, we got it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I remember... There was a little girl that had something wrong with her face. I can't remember what it was, but her face, one side of it was enlarged or something. And my heart filled up. That feeling that I, that sense that I get when energy is being channeled through me, hit me. And I'm just standing there. I'm like, wow, what is that? And I just let it go. I let it flow. We really have these abilities naturally. We, we, were, we came here gifted with things. Now we can expand on it. We can learn about it. We can grow. And those signs and symbols lead us to the people, to the teachers, to um, those who are going to help us along the way when we're paying attention. <clears throat> so I guess that's important for me to share that. <laughs> it feels important. My journey is, I only speak of my journey because I hope that you resonate and you're like, oh yeah, I remember when that happened to me. So you can realize how gifted you really are. It's my job to help you to wake up to that. Um, Charles, I cut some lilacs and put them in the bedroom. My wife loved the smell of them. I love lilacs too. I took a picture of two cats and appeared to be coming out of the dresser trying to figure out the meaning. Two cats coming out of the dresser. I took a picture and two cats appeared to be coming out of the dresser trying to figure out the meaning. Well, there's the number two. <laughs> We're going to have to work on that because that's really something that you need to feel out. And what I would recommend, Charles, is that you write that down. You can use, we have this beautiful tool called Google, too, that when we look up the spiritual meaning of things, oftentimes it's just like, keep looking through. <clears throat> Google it and then don't stop on the first thing that you see. Keep looking until something in your heart says, yes, that's what I needed to hear. Your intuition will lead you in the right direction. Charles is feeling more connected. Excellent. Yeah, Paul's cool with me. <laughs> He's been a great teacher for me. He's been a good friend. Very good friend. I found Paul when I was searching for an answer for help. Yep. Spirit brings people to him. That was what happened. He was barely even getting started when I first contacted him. I'm like, Paul, I don't know what's going on, but I saw you and I heard your name and you're going to tell me what's going on with this. And he was like, well, that happens all the time. I do healing sessions. Would you like one? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. I really did not know what energy healing was. It took me probably a month and a half at least before I contacted him and said, yes, indeed, I would like to try that. <laughs> and <clears throat> I nearly passed out the night before I had the first healing session. And I almost canceled it because of that. So that's my story. But my life was changed. He opened our teachers. Our, the job is to open us up to the brilliance that's inside of us, to 
to take that piece of coal and to start to polish and chip away until we realize our own greatness. So he did that for me. The book two years later, yeah, he and I was like, the first, our first contact was like, yeah, okay, you do healing sessions, but what can I do for you? <laughs> because I'm a total empath. I'm like, are you trying to write a book? And so I kind of had an inkling that he was going to be needing some help writing a book. It wasn't the book that we planned on. We were going to write his life story. It just, that hasn't even happened yet. It was, didn't feel right. We both backed away from it. And I sat out, I kept going to these places and I'm like, what is it that I'm supposed to be writing with him? And all of a sudden it just started to flow through me, these simple little childlike, and he's got the pirate energy and it just kind of flowed. I would take his, his videos that he was putting out to teach and I would say, all right, what, how do we want to, and it would just kind of flow. And it just, that book is is a strange little compilation, truly. <laughs> when I first, I was like, I don't know if anybody's going to even get this book because it's really odd, but it speaks through energy. There's an energy in that book. And if you allow the energy to work through you, every time you read the book, you'll find something different pops up in you. It's, it's that energy. It's not the words, it's the energy. It's incredible that way. And I'm thankful to be a part of that with him. Synchronicity, exactly, Wendy. Um, Charles could post in our group. Yeah, Charles, you can. Are you, Charles, are you in, um, I think you are, you're in Angelic River family. So if you want to put it there and maybe some people could give you some ideas. I, um, I'm trying to fill it out and I don't want to do it all right here. So <laughs> if I get anything, if I get any hits, I'll let you know, Charles. Okay. Catherine Kovacs. I thought you were going to be away from us for a couple of days. Thank you for popping back in. Yes, it does read differently because it, it reads by where you are in life. And when I wrote that book, I was in deep grief. I was still going through the depths. We go through these roller coaster rides and we go into these deep, deep, dark places sometimes. And some of those pieces came out of those depths. And some of them were in lighter places when I was feeling really good. You can kind of tell. And some of them were written in the spirit of Paul. You can tell. Some of those little parables were like, this is, I'm writing about Paul. And then in other ones, you can tell there's a, I usually put a female name or her in there for the caption instead of a him. And you can tell it was more related to me. And then there was one in particular, the compass, that was all, all Caleb because he was working with us too. We, we went to Boston. We took a bunch of pictures together. I flew Caleb in. Caleb did a lot of the artwork. And it was the first time that Paul and I met face to face. And the energy was crazy. We we're like a bunch of little kids, siblings, or, you know, whatever, childhood friends. And we were laughing hysterically most of the time and being total goobers. And I did more writing when I was there. So some of those were like, came out of that too. I don't know. I think it's just the way it was supposed to be. <laughs> we'll work on the next one, maybe a little different. It may be very much the same. I don't know. Where can you post it? You can post it at Angelic River Family if you're on that group. That's for you, Charles. Post it there. I Some, some people, <clears throat> see, I hate to do that because I don't know how the other moderators or, the, or Terry or um, Cheryl Ann will feel about free readings. And some, some pages are really weird about free readings. So if, if you're open to it, Charles, I'm willing to spend a little time on your vision or dream, but I would really like you, I would really encourage you to spend time kind of writing about it. Get out a journal and start writing what you saw and how did it make you feel? That's more my job. I don't want to tell you what your visions mean. Some people will do readings and they just, they just flat out, you know, what my filter says. It's my, it's coming through my filter. So it could be a message when I get that. It could be a message for me. It may not be a message for you when I when I hear your thing and I start to, oh, it, it, it's going to come through me. And it does that with everyone. So you have your own filter. How did it make you feel? Can you sit quietly? Can you meditate? We will put some energy. That's what I'll offer to you today, Charles, is as we're meditating here in a few minutes, we're coming up to about that time. Um, let's put some, let's pull you in so that you'll have a clearer vision so that you got more clearing here because you're obviously opening up. And sometimes when you see things like that, it's, it's purely just a sign that you're getting more third eye activity. So I would suggest to you that you look at it in childlike wonder. What is this trying to ask? Ask your angels, what are you trying to show me? 
let them talk to you. You have your own team. They're so much better at giving these answers than in me in this big group. I, I'm not going to be able to really help you as well as you. You can go to a million psychics and every one of them will probably give you a different answer to your question. We might kind of have the same basis, but <clears throat> the truth is, is you have your own guides and your own um, answers are always available to you. So when I talk about, let me go into this really quick, is when I, uh, this was kind of given to me yesterday, oftentimes I, I work with your inner child um, every day. That's why it's called the playground. But do you realize that powerful little inner child of yours is actually, oftentimes when we pull that little powerhouse in as it heals, that's, that's you. Hold on. I didn't turn on my silencer. <laughs> um, your Holy Spirit higher self is very, very available to you. That's you still. And that's the safest answers you can ever get to any question is to go into your own meditation to welcome your own Holy Spirit higher self to come into that space and then to feel it out through the, that lens of pure source energy. That's who you are, the inside of you. When we're channeling, we're going to that place, to that, that source energy that exists within us and it's coming through. And it's just a matter of turning off the ego Ego likes to come at you out of fear and tries to give you things. You know, you're trying to meditate and it's like, well, did you turn the iron off? You know, did you put the garbage out? You know, you're, and you're like, oh, no, shh, I'm doing this. And then it goes, yeah, but what about this? <laughs> you know, and you're like, shh, ego, hush. That other part of you, as you practice, as you shut that ego out, that other part of you will come to this place of peace and quiet. And that's where those messages will come clearly. And when you're in that space, you can quietly ask your guides or your own Holy Spirit or yourself, say, you know, I saw these two cats coming at me. You know, what, what does that mean? Is there, is there a message there for me? And then be in stillness for a few minutes and see if you can't start feeling your own answers because that, that's powerful. When you can get to that place of hearing it yourself, remember imagination is not something to dispose of. Imagination is powerful. So if you think it's just your imagination giving you those answers, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Imagination is your powerhouse. So rely on it. Let it bring you. Children are very imaginative creatures, and they are more powerful than any adult that's got, you know, you can have 20 years of college education, and that little child that came into the earth, that little newborn baby, has more knowledge has more wisdom. We kind of drum it out of ourselves, don't we? We think we got to do all these other things and jump through all these hoops and get all these degrees. And yet you had so much wisdom. And that person, that little person that you came here as, is still very much alive. Ask that little person. Allow that wisdom to fill you. Allow those answers to come. Charles Cook, Cook or Charles, cat has souls. Yes. Let me see what else you got to say because I'm just going off. Good. Join and post. Just see. See if anybody's got any answers on there. Um, yeah, you could answer in private if you want to. I think I don't think that they've got a lot of restrictions on that page. A lot of some pages really do because keep it in mind when people give you free readings that um they're practicing. A lot of times they're just kind of and so be careful about make sure that all right, here it is. Make sure that you're always checking in with yourself, that you're you're listening to this deeper part of you. Whenever anybody gives you any kind of answers psychically, that the most important thing that you can do is, does this really resonate with me? And if it doesn't, let it go. Because people will tell you things along the way, and they're really sure about what they're seeing. And I've had some people come at me with stuff that I'm like, whoa, <laughs> back off. <laughs> You'll know. You'll be like, I had somebody... There is nothing evil at all about the presence that Steve brings into my world. It's pure light. I sense that. I know it. I've had people, you know, many, many people experience him. And I had a psychic girl con contact me one and she, once and she just out of the blue started giving me these free readings. And then she was like, I sense darkness around you and you've got to get rid of that energy. And you've got to, and she started talking really bad about that whole thing. And I was like, no, mm -mm. No. At first I was like, wait, maybe there's something wrong with me. Maybe. <laughs> and then I'm like, no, what am I doing? 
what am I doing? Steve and I had this plan all along. We're just living out our plan. I know what I'm doing. I know I sense him. I know this is goodness. I know this is clean. I know him. I know he would never come at, with, come at me with anything but love. So that's all I'm saying is make sure that you're, you're listening to your own. When you get answers from other people that you allow yourself to, to hear your own voice in your own heart, then you'll know. Okay. I'm going off this morning. I'm sorry. I thought maybe it could have been a cat my mom had. I know that they have no souls. Yeah, cats most, most definitely have souls. Animals are wise, and they are, they are actually more advanced souls than we are, believe it or not. Those animals that come into this planet to serve as meat, as a food source for us, are extremely advanced souls. They know that they're coming in to sacrifice themselves. Cats and dogs, the reason why they don't have to stay on this planet for very long is they... They're so advanced that they don't have to. You know, like they're going to come in. They're going to brighten our lives. They're going to bring us love. You can feel their energy. Oh, man, what a, you can feel them. They've got this light energy in them. They're incredible workers. Remember that, that these animals have, they come here with a job, every single one of them. They're here with something that they're giving to this planet. And, man, ever spend some time around whales or dolphins, and you'll know there's so much of a soul in that animal. So, I highly recommend you, Charles, if you if you think that you're getting visitations from someone's animals, someone's some past, you know, you're seeing these. Um, I've often heard, we're still going good on time. I've often heard that when an animal dies, that they literally just step out of the body and they just keep going. <laughs> they just keep doing what they're doing. So they're still so present in everybody's lives. They're just like, I'm still here. You know, like I, I didn't go anywhere. You might not be able to see me, but I'm still around. So um, so maybe those cats are just showing you that you can see better. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to show you, hey, look, they've probably always been there. That's what, what my sense is, is they've always been around you. They may be attached to that piece of furniture. Their spirits, they may be just closed because, um, because they're still feeling the love from whoever their owners were or whatever. They're just sticking around. And because you're waking up and your third eye is more active, suddenly you saw them. So that's my sense. You can feel that out and see what you think. Oh, let's see. <clears throat> yes, practicing. We can find our own answers. There is this point where I know for me, I was in a healing session with Paul and it was like, I see wisdom coming in. He was like, I see wisdom. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> but it's true. What happens is the more we spend time getting out of ego, shutting off that naggy voice of it, let's call it naggy. <laughs> oh, naggy, go take a back seat for a while. <clears throat> you let that higher voice come in. It's the truth of who you are. Um, that's what Steve told me. The most important thing, this was early on, the most important thing you can do is to remember who you are. We all need to remember who we are. Remember who you are. You're so powerful. You are here at the time that this planet was created. You are so powerful. Don't, don't belittle yourself. Don't think that you've got anything less than anybody else. You got it all. You just need to get to know it. Just get to know that little person inside of you. I'm going to write a song. <laughs> That'd be a good song now that I think about it. <clears throat> get to know. You don't want me to sing though. Let's see, Wendy, she agrees with the cat thing. See if they see if they hang around. Spend some time, you know, keep working on your gift. You're obviously opening up. You saw that treasure chest yesterday. You're opening up your third eye is, we're so gifted right now. And we're going to work on that again. Scarlet, they're extra sensitive. Yes, animals, is that what you're talking about? Yes, they're super sensitive. So yesterday we did a lot of clearing. And these, I love the way spirit brings these sessions through. It's like playtime, and yet there is so much work going on. I hope that you're aware of that, that when you let go, when you fall into playtime, when you say, yeah, I'm going to go fly with the angels, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play on my, my pirate ship, I'm going to, whatever it is that you want to do today, <clears throat> you want to jump in the water and play with the dolphins and the mermaids, that's okay. We can go through the forest and we can look for little fairies or whatever, you know. <clears throat> While you're letting your child, whenever we're coming into meditation time, I start getting all choked up. We got more clearing. We got more work to do today. 
So, <clears throat> these, the way that spirit is bringing these through, and I'm only the channel. I'm not making this stuff up. It just kind of happens. Whenever the, you guys come into the room, spirit comes in with us. I, I, I'm like, and before I start, I'm always like, come on in. I'm, I just want to be in the channel. And so whoever joins me here gets personalized attention. <laughs> Whatever it is that you need, they come through exactly what you need. And so our meditation might go to wherever my filter takes me. But yours is taking you where you want to go. And as your, your child is coming up out and learning, remembering what it's like, it's all a remembrance. What is it like to not be tied down to a body? It's like, let's step out of the body for a little bit. Let's go play. And while we go play, our teams, Ascended Masters, Jesus, I always, you know, that's my go-to. Whoever you want to go to. I, I This morning I invited in any angels, any archangels that they know who they are. <clears throat> I don't need to say, well, this person needs that one and this person needs that one. I'm not going to use any titles today. It's been brought to me really bigly <laughs> today, <laughs> bigly, that uh, titles are unimportant. So I'm just like, all right, bring it. Whoever wants to come in today, whatever job you have to do, whatever person needs you, we are going to gather in a circle and we're going to allow those angels, those men, those guides, your guides, to <clears throat> have a more clear voice today <clears throat> to make you, help you to be more aware of their presence. <clears throat> I'm sorry about my throat. <clears> throat> Stop it. <clears throat> yes, we will clear. I promise. <laughs> so we have people here that need clearing. I need clearing. I ask for clearing every day. <laughs> Sometimes more than once. So let's do some clearing. Let's have some fun. We got just enough time. We got about 20 minutes to go into a meditation. So if you're here and you're wanting to go into this and you want to feel that <clears throat> clearing energy, <clears throat> let me get all cleared out good first. <clears throat> so I'm not doing that all the way through and waking you back up. I'd like you, whenever you're doing these with me, when I work one-on-one -on -one with people, I'm like, whatever. And they'll say, well, what do I need to do? I'm like, be comfortable. <laughs> be comfortable. Be in the spirit of letting go of what no longer serves you. That's it. Just make yourself comfortable. So if that means you're sitting in a chair with your feet on the ground, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry so much. <clears throat> if it means that you are laying down in bed, if it means you're going to fall asleep, it's okay. Whatever, whatever suits you, I would like you to find your space. And I'd like you to be ready to bring in that, that little... Beautiful little child of yours that's the creator that <clears throat> wants to come out and play, whichever one. <clears throat> Thank you, Scarlet. Let's hold. It's only, it's only opening. It's just opening. You can all do this. Just open yourselves up. Right now, I want you to be aware of the fact that you have this beautiful higher self, this consciousness inside of you that has never been damaged by life. It's this perfect being of love. That's the truth of who you are. And along with playing with that little child today, I'd like you to bring that part of you. <clears throat> if you're willing, I'd like you to bring that part of you into the circle. Are you, would you like to get to know your Holy Spirit higher self? And if you would say, hey, would you please join us here? With your permission, I ask for help to, um, Join us all together, our Holy Spirit, higher selves, to join together in this room, in this healing space. I want you to visualize us in a big circular room. It's like a bubble. That's what I always create. I kind of puff up my chest. I blow all that love into my heart space, and I make it bigger, 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 bigger. Visualize that. Make that heart space so big until it just kind of goes, boop, pops right out like you were blowing a bubble. And then I put us all in the center of it. So we're in the center of this huge bubble right now. And it's really very, very safe. We have all the protection from Archangel Michael, from all of our archangels and ascended masters. And whoever I see, the angels of the violet fire, St. Germain, he's always, oh, I love his presence. Delicious. Hmm. So visualize yourself standing in that circle. And if your little children need some attention today, you can let them play in the middle of the circle. 
There's toys laid out on the floor and a little rug in the middle. And I'd like you to bring them into the center. And all of our light beings are there and we are standing in a circle. Our hands are joined. And the energy flows easily from one to the next, to the next, to the next. And our hearts are resonating with each other. As you're sitting here and you find things that inside of you that maybe feel like lower vibrational energy, maybe you're feeling a little jealousy or a little guilt or a little pain or whatever it is. If it's not out of love, <clears throat> that little child is feeling something right now. I'd like you to open up your hands and just kind of let it go. Like you got a ball in your hands and you're rolling it away. You can let it go. And breathe. Remember to breathe in this energy of love as we're sitting here. <clears throat> and we're going to allow some clearing energy. We need that in the throat. I can feel it. So let's allow that to happen as we're gathered here. Our bodies can receive healing. Now feel that white light shining down from source energy, shining down on your crowns. Right now there's heat at the top of your head. It's pouring down into the third eye, <clears throat> clearing away anything that's blocking you right now, helping you to see more clearly. It's If there's fear there, sometimes we're afraid of that third eye stuff. If you're afraid, it's okay to let it go. There's nothing that's going to hurt you. You just hold yourself in the energy of love and nothing, nothing lower vibrational can get anywhere near you. So it's okay. We're working out of the energy of love. And down into the throat. And you're finding your voices, those vocal cords are coming to, to, they're being activated so you can speak more clearly, so you can shine your light, so you can use your words, speak your truth. Breathe that into your throat. I feel some good clearing, thank you. <clears throat> that feels much better. I'm going to hold it there in the throat for just a minute. Allow for some expansion there. For however long we need it, we're keeping it right there, okay? So as you're breathing, kind of envision your throat space growing bigger and wider. What is it like the frog? Like this frog, you know how they go, oh, they make their throats really big? Blow your throat out really big. Fill it up with all this energy. Oh, much better. Thank you for expanding that space. Energy is going to stay there. For those of you that need it, the healing will continue. We're going to move on down into the heart. Big expansion there. If you're holding on to any lower vibrational energy, any thoughts of unworthiness right now, I'm feeling that, you can let that go. You are so worthy of all of this healing and this love. Let yourself bathe in that. It's okay. I feel the energy of loved ones around us. If you're inviting anyone in, if you feel a need to speak or to have some contact with someone that's already passed, it's okay. They can come in. As long as they're here for our highest of good, as long as they're coming out of love, they can join us. It's like they're standing there knocking at the door. Come on in. Come on in. It's okay. Ah, that's better. Open up your heart to that love. We're just getting bathed in it right now. It's beautiful. Thank you for bringing in those ancestors. All of that love. Perfect. Mm, delicious. I hope you can feel that. Let's allow wisdom. Let's bring wisdom into the room. Anyone who chooses to have more wisdom, soul wisdom, that, that wisdom that comes from your many lifetimes, bring it back. Opening up the Akash, basically. You're remembering things from past lives. If you can't see clearly what they are, at least remembering the lessons that have been learned from past lives. We're letting those lessons be remembered. 
and it helps us to release those trigger points, those things that oh, we're like get so easily triggered sometimes by things. When we remember that deeper wisdom, when we bring that in, then we, if we take that pause and we go into that wisdom, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I know why they're responding that way. It's okay. We can come back with love. Okay, it's beautiful. It's down into the solar plexus. Can you find your treasures in there that you've been saving up? If there's anything there that you don't want anymore, you can let it go right now. Just let it go. The Archangel will come in and scoop it up, haul it away. It'll be returned. I promise you'll have new energies. Your gifts will fill. When you create space for those beautiful gifts, for your abilities, those abilities will expand. Mm, beautiful. And we're holding energy at the solar plexus. Do you have any anything that you were told as a child that was untrue, that you know, you're like, ah, no, that stuff has got to go. Just scoop it up and throw it away right now. <laughs> Those people who told you you couldn't do something were wrong. Let it go. Ah, good shift. Breathe deeply right now. Ah, much better. That was much better. I don't know who did that, but that was beautiful. Somebody just let something big go. I felt that. Down into the second. All that sexual energy, all of that, anything negative that's still sitting there that, that comes from past relationships, you can let that go. It's okay. Let it go. Open yourself up to new love. Open yourself up to new relationships, to a new way of seeing our relationships, whether it be your parents or, or your spouse or your significant other or, or, you know, whatever you want in a relationship, open yourself up to a new energy. Our relationships are changing. I hope you can see that. I hope you can feel that. There's a deeper love there than I've ever experienced before. It's, um, it's that God love. We begin to see God in those that we love. And when we see that, it's like, oh gosh, there's nothing like it. <laughs> there's nothing like it. It's a new energy. This is a new earth. Step into it. Okay, down into the base, down into your sacral chakra. And, and I call it that because it feels like a platform. Build that strong. Let them build that up strong. Clear it away. Clear away anything that is making you feel weak. If you don't have that strong foundation, you can't build from it. And you'll continue to topple over every time you try to build. So we're allowing that to strengthen, to be made from solid rock, steel, whatever it is that you envision. Beautiful. The energy is flowing so perfectly. I hope your spine is straight. Allow that energy to flow all the way through from your crown, all the way down to your sacral chakra. And then we're letting it, as it's clearing away anything that no longer serves you, we're letting it wash right on down our legs and out our feet. Let it go. Let it go like you're standing in a river right now. Let it just wash right on out. And as you're standing there, that all of that energy is being recycled by the earth. And it's coming right back up your feet, just like we always do. And then right back up your feet, up your legs. Can you feel that heat come back up into your body, up into your spine? And then let's let it just go like a gusher or Yellowstone today. It's going to come right up all the way up your spine and shoot yellow light, green light, healing light right up through your head. So let it go. Just breathe in deeply from your spine and let that come all the way up through. Ah, there's so much heat. It's beautiful. I love it when there's heat. Spirit is here with us. And then right up through the top of your head and it's just shooting out. I want you to envision wherever you live, wherever whatever part of the earth that you want it to go to if you want it, i want it to go all the way around the earth i'd love to just shower the earth with this green healing light all the way around the planet all the way to the very core of the earth to the highest mountain to the moon to mars everywhere to every living creature to every blade of grass to every piece of clover to every little flower every little part of this earth and to every part of the universe surrounding it and to every living creature just let it flow let it flow. You are such powerful creatures. Excellent. 
It's filling my heart right now, so hang with me for a second. Beautiful. Beautiful. There is a lot of beautiful love. Lynn, thank you for popping in. Okay, breathe deep. Breathe deep. You just had a beautiful clearing. My head is ringing right now. If anybody's got this happened to me yesterday too. So let's have some healing energy to the head where whatever's happening with one of you, it's like my ears get to ringing. If it's me, I'm allowing heat and energy and love and healing to go through every single cell of the body. So each one of you, if you, if you want that, just, just allow it. It's a powerful energy, and I think that's what's happening is it's so powerful. Give yourself a few minutes when you step out of this to just be still. If you're experiencing that same thing where you're like, wow, we get done, and I'm like, whoa, my head is spitting. It's okay. You've just gone through a lot of healing. You've gone through a lot of powerful energy. So allow yourself, allow your body to integrate the energy that happens as your Holy Spirit higher self gets back into that space inside of you. There's such powerful energy flowing in us these days. The body has a hard time keeping up, that's all. So breathe in deeply. Allow your little one, your child that's been playing in that circle to, to climb gently back into your, your heart space. If they feel at home there, they're ready for a little rest. And your Holy Spirit higher self that we called into the circle, if you allowed them to join us, then please pull them back in. Keep them safely inside of your heart space. You've created a beautiful space for them to come back into. They're thanking you for that. The angels, your guides, they're reminding you that they're around you always. They're always there. You're never alone. You're always surrounded by love. And they will help you. Ask them. They want, they're reminding you right now. Ask them. They're always there. If you see something, if you have a vision, if you have any kind of a neat experience, like you're like, wow, did I just do that? What was that? What was I, what did I just see? What did I just feel? Ask them, ask them to, to comfort you as your gifts are being enhanced, as this new energy fills your body. Always reach to them and ask them for help as you, as needed. Don't be afraid. They're always there. There's no time on the other side. They get all the time in the world and they're there for you personally, you in your own unique perfectionness, imperfect perfection, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. They love you so much. Don't forget to call them in. Wendy, let me put my glasses back on. I was in La La Land. Let's, let's wrap each one of us before we start reading. Wrap each one of us. I'm going to ask Archangel Michael to wrap each one in protection and healing energy and love and let this healing continue for however long it's needed. For however much you're willing to receive, that's how much you will receive. So however much you open to, that's what you're going to get. And that will continue. Drink lots of water. It can be powerful. It can be exhausting if things come up. when you After you do these, these sessions like this, if you have emotions that come up, if you have memories that come up, they're there for you to heal. They want to come up so that you can bring them into the surface and so that you can work to heal them. So know that. Take good care of yourself. Be still with those things. Acknowledge them. Say, yes, I see you. I, I feel you. And I'm letting you go. I'm going to let you go because I don't need you anymore. I'm ready to bring love into my existence. I'm ready to be at a higher vibration. So don't forget to do that. Self-love is so important. Drink a lot of fluids. Take really good care of yourselves because there's so much action going on inside of you right now. Lots of rest. If you need a nap, take a nap. It's okay. <laughs> See, Wendy, I was jolted so hard I made a noise. I was aware I did not nod off and my legs moved. I could feel the energy on my crown. That's perfect. I'm so glad you're getting all this energy. It's beautiful, Wendy. Prodded. I think I get what you're saying. And I felt that, Scarlet, you felt the heat good because I'm still a little bit on fire. Good. I'm glad that you're feeling this. This is what happens. This is what, you know, we are um, all channels to each other. We're learning how to do this. We're resonating. So you guys are learning this. And you can take this and do this too. So, good, Wendy. I'm glad you felt that. You know why it feels so powerful to you? Is because you are in a space of receiving. Whatever you are willing to receive. Charles is on fire. Good. I'm on fire too. They are bringing us. When I said the angels of the violet fire, it was like, okay. <laughs> They're literally lighting us up today. Wendy, there are, let me see. You guys are very scarlet, very emotional. Okay. 
just it's okay wrap yourself up in love you are so loved those emotions are coming up for you to deal with them it's good that they're coming up you don't want to bottle them so let them come up Jetta I'm glad I'm so glad that you've got what you needed you guys you know I'm always around if you need to contact me I love you so much and I'm so glad we'll start doing that at a time I don't want to run over my <laughs> 1030 but I'm so glad that you're all feeling this know that you are so loved that you're wrapped up that you that you have so much support and take good care of yourselves and you are so appreciated for what you're doing they want you to know that <laughs> you were typing fire as I said it good you were feeling the same thing I was I and that's that's what I do <laughs> that's what we're capable of we're empaths we can feel one another's um, illnesses or we feel the good stuff too and it's beautiful so thank you for sharing yourself with me today Wendy you're so welcome Scarlett you're so welcome please go out and have a beautiful day or Wendy for those of you on the other side of the globe enjoy your the rest of your evening and night and I love you so much I will be back tomorrow morning at 9 30 um, let's see today is Tuesday yes tomorrow morning will be Wednesday just as always <laughs> I will be here I love you guys so much please take good care of yourselves and I'll talk to you tomorrow